Hello everyone, this is a Lab 4 help session. Um, I'm going to be using the Blinky program instead of the Lab 4 program you'll be using for pass off. So pay attention to my problem solving techniques and let's get started here. So the first thing we need to do is fetch our instruction from memory. So the program counter is there and the memory address register is there. Now the MAR points to where we are in memory. The program counter points to our next instruction in memory. Sort of. I'll talk more about that in a minute. So first thing we need to do is get the instruction. So we're going to load the program counter into the MAR and I'm going to increment the program counter so that it will be pointing at the next thing in memory. Program counter looks ahead, MAR looks at where we are, and then we'll clock the machine. And then I want to select what's in that memory location that the MAR is pointing to and put it in the instruction register. Then we have our, we have our instruction fetched, so I want to decode it. And we need to evaluate source. The decode is encapsulated. We're not super concerned about it, so the board handles that for us. Now this, we're starting at an immediate N, and we're going to a register. So the immediate N is going to be stored where the program counter is pointing. So you can see that 300 is in location C002. So first thing we want to do, put the program counter in the MAR, and increment the program counter. time you have a memory access. So we're still on evaluate source and we'll clock the machine. And now we can see that 300 is ready to be pulled out. Dang it, Windows 8. The 300 is ready to be pulled out and then we want to put it in the source register. So pull it through the alley mux, zero for that side, one for that side, and stick it in the source register there. So now we have our source and we're ready to evaluate our destination. This is all set up and we can clock it. So now our destination is a register so we're going to pull out RD, use RD for destination and RS for source. We're doing destination, so we pull that down and destination register. Now we have a destination we need um, to store our value so we're going to go to store next and hit the clock button not the back button. Then we select our ALU and we're writing to the register, so we select RD again and we need to say register write enable. So our 300 is about to go in there and then we can fetch the next instruction because we have moved that immediate value into that register. So it remembers how to do the fetch instruction from last time. We don't need to reteach it that. So we can just clock through that. It also knows the decode, and it also knows the evaluate source, because if you look at our instruction, it's moving an immediate value to an absolute address in memory. So it doesn't know what to do when we hit evaluate destination. Now, absolute address in memory, if you look at C008, that has our 120 that you can see from the instruction. So that is the address in memory where we want to put our 5A80. So the program counter is pointing at our 120 right now. So we want to grab that in the MAR and increment it. Look, there's that formation again. And then we're still in evaluate destination, so we clock it. Okay, now the MAR is pointing at the thing. It is pointing at our pointer. This is how pointers work in assembly. So we don't want to get this value down into the destination register. We want to get it up into the MAR here. Um, so that we can access that location of memory and we want to put what's in that location of memory in the destination register. So let's select this and we can bring it up. This is the only way to bring it up here. So we select 5 there and if you'll notice we're adding that to the program counter right now because if you look at the top of the adder mux it goes into the adder and on the other end is C008, which is our program counter value. So we need to backtrack out and 
Oh look, there's a zero we can add it to, so it won't mess up our value. We have our nice 120 right there, it hasn't been changed. Oh look, the, the last two buttons have magically been pressed. Don't, don't ask what just happened. Um, so, the MAR is now pointing at the location 120, which is where we want it. And those zeros are what is currently stored in that location, so we want to select that and bring that through to the destination register. So it's going to... Oh, and we want to store next, so we clock it. Now it's going to store to memory, so we want to select memory right enable. Dang it, Windows 8. So it's going to store to the memory address that is in the MAR, which is why we want the 120 up there. And we're done with this instruction, so we want to fetch the next one, and we can clock it. Now it already knows how to do a fetch, and a decode, and evaluate source is where it doesn't know. Now it looks like it'd be another immediate, but this actually uses the constant generator. So we're going to select a 1 here. We need to pull that down into the source register. And then we have a source. Hurry up. And then we have our destination which is an absolute address, so thank goodness we don't have to put that in again. And we can step straight through to the next fetch. So this one is an immediate to an absolute address, so it should be exactly the same. Yep, and here's our fetch for our next instruction. This is an XOR, immediate and absolute. I think, I, yeah, I'm stepping over this entire assembly instruction. So now we have moved out word to R15, to into R15. So this is another constant generator created one. So I'm going to step through fetch and decode. So it doesn't know what to do with the source because it's got a two instead of a one. So we're gonna just Give it a two. Just gonna give it a two in the source. And then our next status destination, clock it. And it already knows how to do destination because we've told it how to store to a register before. So now we have sub dot word one r15. So we can step over that whole instruction. Now we have a jump. Jumps are fun. So if you remember from the disassembly homework, the offset that we would that we would be jumping by is in our in our instructions. So if you look in the instruction register, and we're gonna have one, there's no source and destination, so we're gonna have one execute state. So we want to clock into the execute state from decode. Now our offset that we are, how many locations we're going to be jumping by is in our instruction register and it's half the number of addresses we want to jump by because every address is even. So this box here is going to multiply it by two for us because this is a bit shift. So it just shifts the bits to the left one and then that doubles the number. So we want to pull it up through there and then that's our offset and it will be added to our program counter and it gives us this memory address and that's a realistic memory address because this is a very small program so we want to put one no we want to put oh that's right we don't we put it back into the program counter I always forget that and I always have to start over I'm glad I caught myself that time don't do what I almost did so we're gonna add that into the program counter and then next we're going to fetch the next instruction and it will fetch that new address during the fetch phase. Oh and I almost forgot you have to set it conditionally or it will never take the jump the way this is set up. So now you can see it is working as it should. So I'm 
not really sure why I'm clocking instead of running. Okay, now I run it, and you can see up in the corner that the green light is blinking on and off. So this program is now operational, and I hope you've learned some ways of problem solving that will help you with your lab four.